Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to announce today the very special lecturer. Uh, as you probably noticed, last year we started the series of seminars devoted to the celebration of the 50 years of our institute. And today, Roland Wolkenwood of Merck Company, not Sigma Art, <laughs> it was written in the announcement, came to us to tell something about the synthesis of metabolites, but using the different tools. Dr. Roland Wolkenwood was graduated at University of Basel. Welcome, all of you, again. Okay. Then, after graduation, he uh, got a postdoc position uh, at Berkeley, California, and worked on artificial photosynthesis, also with the Department of Energy of the United States, then stayed all time in the industry. Uh, he lectured at University College London, at Technical University of Delft, at Urbino University and Siena University. He is very active on the European Biosciences and involved in the section of applied biocatalysis as well as uh, European Federation of Biotechnology. I think that is enough because we have only one hour here at this room and it's better to hear our lecture. Laurent, the floor is yours. I have, I have the microphone here. Do you? Yeah. It's working. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. So, it's, uh, thank you, uh, Stan, uh, uh, very much for inviting me. Uh, uh, and uh, it's a great pleasure uh, to be here back in Poland uh, uh, again, and especially uh, at Politechnica here in Wuch. And, uh, uh, although I have worked for more than 30 years in industry, I have always uh, kept my interest in scientific research and especially also in uh, discovering and developing uh, new things. But at the end, of course, uh, in industry, the product in the bottle is what is key uh, from the uh, uh, research uh, being done. So what I would like to discuss with you today is uh, tools and ingredients for the biocatalytic synthesis of uh, metabolites. So how do I move forward? Uh, maybe I have just to switch here. Ah, okay. So of course there's the question why should you at all uh, synthesize uh, metabolites? I think uh, we all know from our biochemistry courses, this is uh, 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 very important and uh, uh, it's uh, being uh, uh, also rediscovered with the uh, renewed interest in the metabolic pathways, uh, uh, confirmation of the metabolite identification is facilitated by the availability of metabolites for instrumental analysis like mass spectrometry or NMR. Uh, the computer is not enough to uh, uh, con uh, find out uh, uh, newly identified metabolites which accumulate in tumor tissues. Uh, Metabolites, as we all know from our basic biochemistry courses, are required for robust functional bioassays. If you want to measure the enzyme activity, one needs to have a, a substrate as product, pure product available in order to measure 
uh, how many units of uh, enzyme activity are available, but it's also important, fundamentally important, to investigate stability issues and to discover uh, novel functions, which is of course uh, also of interest for fundamental research in molecular biology, how metabolites can influence uh, also uh, uh, gene expression and uh, riboswitches. And last but not least, uh, I think uh, the uh, enantiomers, like the left and right hand, uh, are important in life because I think that's of course an essence of uh, living organisms that they, the enzymes differentiate between left and right handed uh, molecules and nature is very clever in uh, designing metabolic pathways that can be either within the same biological cell parallel in complementary pathways uh, or like in highways uh, non-intersecting enantiocomplementary pathways which do not, do not cross, or even building large complexity by converging pathways so that you have, let's say, a left-handed uh, uh, building block and a right-handed building block, uh, and by economy of, uh, of the biological cell, building up, let's say, from building blocks with uh, uh, four chiral centers at the end, a uh, natural compound with 16 chiral centers, which is by total synthesis in chemistry uh, very challenging. The contributions of metabolites to medicines have been enormous uh, in clinical chemistry and uh, uh, diagnostics, molecular recognition in biomedical analysis, robust and reliable routine point of care analysis, but also in therapeutics, drug behavior, and toxicology, drug discovery, early development, and uh, regulation of uh, biochemical uh, pathways. We shouldn't forget that uh, uh, more than half of the new chemical entities for small molecular drugs for the years 1981 to 2008 uh, derive from natural product uh, uh, structures. And uh, also in cancer research, this is just an outline from a Bulletin of Cancer showing the metabolites as uh, privileged, uh, selective and powerful lead compounds for uh, controlling a cell cycle. Metabolites are also, as I mentioned before, key for understanding the structure and function of proteins. And of course, we have many experts in uh, structural biology, uh, also in, in the audience. And we all know that uh, the uh, growth of, uh, of the uh, 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 protein structures, uh, uh, I just took the newest number of today from PDB, uh, 130,102 protein structures are uh, uh, deposited and uh, that uh, there are uh, an increasing number of uh, pure proteins which uh, have been uh, crystallized 3D structures uh, determined and nobody knows the function and the big uh, US initiative by the NIH, the Enzyme Function Initiative, tries to develop uh, generalized methods how to derive uh, function uh, from the structure. So I think at the end, of course, the, uh, somebody in the lab has to take the, the pure protein and demonstrate that uh, a substrate is transformed in the product. And for that, I think the metabolite is key. Uh, what's also interesting on the right hand side, the number of protein, I update it every year, but you see that uh, the uh, number of uh, uh, unique protein folds has stayed constant at 1,393. If we look at ourselves, our body, uh, uh, the current uh, uh, database on the number of uh, human metabolites uh, done by David Wissart at the University of Alberta in Edmonton, Canada, he uh, is collecting uh, the statistics of 
the number of metabolites known since 2007. So it has, this has increased from 2,180 to, this is the most recent number from 2000, 2012, 40,153. So it's, we don't even know all uh, the human metabolites. That's a, 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 current, uh, a current ongoing research. And of course, it becomes even more challenging as we know that only uh, a minority of human cells are in us and a majority are microbial cells. So that's, I think, another level of complexity. And in addition with the interest, this is uh, for the healthy uh, cells, the interest in the diseased cells or cancer cells, which uh, often have a different metabolism, increases the complexity. This shows the, the, comp the dimension of the problem. And you also see now from <laughs> Uh, person like me from the synthetic side, the challenge on the synthetic side, you see on the right hand side the number of compounds with synthesis references has not increased, you see it here on the right hand side, has not increased correspondingly only from 220 to 1943. So there's a huge challenge for all of us globally to make the compounds that are needed to, to move forward. Just to give you also uh, some small hint of that, there are now more than 700 known inborn errors of metabolism with newborn babies and no country of the world, no health system is able to test for all of these uh, because it's too costly. And, but even more complex also scientifically, there is a lack of the corresponding metabolites to do the diagnosis and differentiate these diseases. Then the next question comes, of course, uh, because of these huge dimensions, uh, the one needs to focus on, on the selected. And the question is, which metabolites to, uh, to synthesize? And here I've just taken uh, uh, graphs from the uh, two uh, uh, very often, which I use very often, the Keck database from Kyoto University, which was established by Minoru Kanehisa in Kyoto, and Adam Arkin's uh, uh, metabolic uh, pathways deriving also from metabolic reconstructions from fully sequenced uh, genomes. And uh, there uh, we have uh, focused uh, on the most important uh, uh, central pathways as, as well as uh, uh, disease uh, uh, relevant uh, metabolic pathways. Then once one has done a selection of metabolites comes the next question, what type of strategies and tactics do you need to make these products in the bottle? So this is the general problem, somebody uh, wanting to make these products phases, you have uh, uh, the available starting materials that you have available today and this is what, what would be desired, the product that's globally non-existing or nobody uh, has made it. And then is the question which road, which road to take to get from starting material to product. So first of all it's like with uh, uh, being in a foreign city, uh, you need a map uh, navigation. Of course, nowadays with uh, all the Google Maps, it's uh, becoming easier. But uh, in uh, uh, synthesis, uh, we don't have Google Maps. Uh, so we need to find which way would be uh, 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 the best way of these. Then, of course, from a practical point of view, uh, you also would like not to have 100 reaction steps to get from the starting material to the product, but ideally in one step. So the integration of different uh, reaction steps into a minimum number. And last but not least, you would also like to intensify then the finally selected uh, reaction steps so that not uh, you have your starting material in a millimolar concentration but in molar concentration so that you need uh, less space and you can convert it in a, in a shorter time uh, to uh, the product. So actually 
uh, most of the things are related to uh, this slide uh, here. From a manufacturing uh, point of view, performance, selectivity and sustainability are important. And I summarize this under the uh, expression molecular economy. Uh, this integrates different uh, ideas. The atom economy, which was introduced by Barry Trost, it's from Stanford University. The uh, step uh, uh, economy, uh, also by Paul Wender from Stanford University. And the redox uh, economy, introduced by Phil Baran from Scripps in San Diego. Uh, in addition to these uh, fundamental concepts, which mainly came from chemistry, uh, the conversion economy is, from the industrial point of view, important. You want to convert 100% of the substrate to product, because if you don't convert completely, you deal with the separation of non-reacted substrate uh, from the product. The chiral economy is uh, as well important. And last but not least, the uh, product recovery. Uh, there's not much practical application. If you have discovered a fantastic uh, reaction that gives you the product, but you have no method to get the product out of the reaction mixture and to purify it. And that's actually where most of the work also is uh, uh, related. So uh, the key questions to ask when one starts uh, synthesis, where to start from? Here, this is again uh, just a drawing, a copy from Mino Kanehisa's uh, uh, metabolic pathway map. Which route and which tools to select? How are chemical and enzymatic steps uh, interfaced? Uh, in uh, designing the routes, uh, it's uh, similar like uh, in uh, uh, macroscopic dimensions. Uh, there are old uh, routes, like here these Roman routes in ancient uh, Europe. This is an old Roman route in the Swiss mountains, which I walked uh, myself. It's very pleasant. It's 2,000 years old, still working, and it's a, a very uh, slow, it's not very steep because the Roman soldiers uh, uh, had to walk from Italy through the mountains to northern Germany, so it was uh, very uh, nice uh, uh, to walk, still existing today, but slow. Uh, then, of course, you have the uh, fast uh, routes. Uh, here, this is the world's largest tunnel through the Gotthard Tunnel, which was just uh, opened recently, and where uh, you can uh, go below the mountains or over bridges. Uh, there are slow and fast routes, and as we all know, forward and backward uh, route enzymes can catalyze forward or backward reaction depending on the thermodynamics. So if we look at nature's way, how to uh, synthesize uh, uh, this is a blueprint for chemical synthesis because uh, nature offers very many short routes in contrast to chemistry, which needs uh, to a lot of protection groups because of uh, missing selectivity. Uh, the uh, starting materials, the expression of ac active enzymes and uh, thermodynamics uh, are a key for the choice of a biocatalytic system. And that's, of course, also uh, where one, by changing the thermodynamics, one can make reaction, reactions possible. And product recovery and purification, as I mentioned before. And I think what's uh, very nice uh, uh, by nature, that uh, central metabolites uh, can act as hubs for uh, remote metabolites, so to, to make uh, uh, certain key metabolites from which uh, uh, many others are derived. I give then later some example of the uh, D-glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So this is, of course, uh, globally uh, used uh, very uh, much uh, by many groups uh, by uh, using whole cells. Uh, 
like uh, uh, here uh, Sang Yup uh, Lee's uh, group in Korea and uh, the uh, uh, Jay Kiesling's group in Berkeley uh, making the uh, anti malaria intermediate artemisininic acid in uh, Saccharomyces uh, cerevisiae. Uh, I think uh, the challenges by using uh, whole cells are of course to uh, engineer the, the whole cell and at the end reach the high uh, space uh, time yields uh, uh, required as done by the marvelous work here by Jay Kiesling's group increasing the uh, yields but also there it's important to identify the bottlenecks and for the identification of bottlenecks one needs to know which step is, uh, is limiting Product recovery and purification is uh, where most of the work uh, lies and I won't go through all the details. Uh, uh, this uh, has been, I have published in a booklet on comprehensive uh, biotechnology. Just to summarize, the key thing is how do you get from the mixture at the termination of the biocatalytic reaction to the pure metabolite down here and there are different routes how to uh, uh, obtain that. I mean ideally of course uh, you could do uh, uh, everything by, by the biology, by, by the whole cell as uh, JBS Haldane has uh, uh, been reported to say uh, early in the 20th uh, century. Uh, he made a statement that chemists didn't like uh, very much. Uh, he said that uh, 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 why go through the uh, trouble of uh, chemical synthesis if the bugs can, can do it for you. So that, uh, but uh, I think the challenge uh, uh, with a complete, uh, complete uh, whole cell biological synthesis that it takes a lot of uh, uh, efforts to really set that up and uh, one faster way how to achieve is how to combine the chemical, the known chemical reaction steps, the known enzymatic reaction steps, the known purification and recovery steps and select the best combination how to get from the starting material to the pure product. Ongoing from uh, starting material to product one needs to uh, consider a couple of boundary conditions and I think one of the most important in industrial environments is safety, health and environment and this has actually driven uh, a, a lot of the transition from uh, relatively uh, difficult uh, chemical reactions to biocatalytic uh, reactions. Another point is of course do you have the starting material available? <laughs> Do you have uh, access? Is the biocatalyst known the function? Uh, can you easily uh, express the gene and uh, assay the enzyme activity? Stability of the enzyme but also stability of the intermediates and products is an issue. How much time do you need to develop? Can you scale this uh, or is this only possible at uh, small Eppendorf uh, 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 volumes and how robust, robust is the process. For that one needs uh, the analytical tools like in walking and hiking in the mountains and uh, as uh, we all know uh, HPLC, LCMS is uh, one of the keys. This is uh, separation of all the isoprenoid phosphates and pyrophosphates which uh, uh, we have achieved for the first time or uh, the chiral separation. Uh, this is uh, uh, the chiral separation of, uh, of the key uh, uh, metabolite in the, metabol in the uh, metabolic pathway to steroids. That's the 2,3 oxytoscholane and it's only the S uh, configuration that's uh, required. Uh, so it's important if you make this compound that you make sure you get only the S and here, here this was a small impurity of the R 
because only the S uh, configuration is taken by the next enzyme in the pathway, the oxytosqualane cyclase, cyclase, which then converts this linear uh, molecule with the epoxide function and the double bonds in a fantastic enzymatic reaction to the uh, ring system uh, with four ring cycles at the same time. No chemist could do that. Sometimes a good ana a analysis can be also competition to the biocatalysis, like in this example. This is the 2,6-diaminopimelic uh, 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 acid. And if you have a very good chiral separation, you can, of course, also uh, scale that up to preparative scale. And in, in this case, uh, this was the a better way uh, to prepare the pure compounds than going through biocatalysis. So biocatalysis always needs to put in perspective with other methods of uh, preparation. Then uh, for charged compounds, capillary electrophoresis uh, is a very nice tool uh, to uh, uh, separate, for example, D and L uh, Phosphoglyceric acid, this is a key compound of uh, glycolysis, and only the D form uh, is uh, relevant uh, for uh, glycolysis. NMR is, uh, of course, a, a methodology with high information density, and for discovering novel uh, reactions, this is now routinely used uh, to do the kinetics. It's automated, so uh, this shows just the uh, phosphorylation, uh, rea a phosphorylation reaction where you can then from this uh, kinetics, uh, this, so this is increasing time, and here is chemical shift, you can uh, calculate the, the kinetics of the uh, reaction. Now, uh, besides the analysis of, uh, of the compounds, there is another analysis to be done only in your mind, and this is the, what chemists know as retrosynthetic analysis. So this is just, a, a, in German you would call a Gedankenexperiment. Uh, so you think uh, if you have a target, uh, how could you derive it, from which starting material could you derive it back? So for example here this is uh, metabolite uh, pyridoxamine 5 prime phosphate, and chemically uh, there are all these different retrosynthetic paths uh, possible and you see that there are many steps here, 11 steps, here uh, 9 steps. That's of course not something, I mean if you compare all these ways you would say no, I, I will select uh, just uh, a one step uh, synthesis. So that's what uh, here in this case can also be done. But this, uh, this uh, Retrosynthetic analysis doesn't uh, mention all the problems that uh, appear with product recovery and purification. Indeed, uh, although this is only one step, here a lot of work lies in the purification. So that's what, of course, another type. Now comes the biochemical side. Uh, if you apply the same principle of retrosynthetic analysis which was introduced by E.J. Corey in chemistry to biochemistry, you just take the metabolic pathways and do it in, in your mind in reverse. So everybody can do that. Uh, and this is now applied to pyridoxamine 5 prime phosphate here in the Keck pathway. So if you look from where could you uh, derive it? It would also be pyridoxamine uh, by the corresponding enzymatic phosphorylation. Or you could have two different types of uh, transamination deriving from pyridoxal phosphate. Of course, there you can then combine it also which starting material is uh, less expensive and uh, what uh, 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 makes uh, more uh, sense. So this is a very easy uh, way everybody can do. The same is uh, applied to phosphomevalonate, R5 phosphomevalonate. You could actually derive from mevalonate or from mevalonate pyrophosphate, but since uh, this is uh, 
uh, much uh, more difficult to access. It's obvious uh, to start from this here. And uh, the central metabolite deglyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, you uh, probably can't see from the, from the back, but you can actually, uh, we have uh, worked together actually with a pioneer of visualization of metabolic pathways. This was Donald Nicholson. Uh, he uh, already was working for us and the International Union of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology when he was over 90 years old. And uh, we made all these uh, metabolic pathways also on the website uh, uh, available. So if you uh, go back from where could you make it, you see many options, but you also can figure out uh, many of them. If you start from the down here, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, that's certainly not an option because nobody in the world has ever made it in pure form. If you take fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, that's of course uh, generally uh, available, but then you deal with the separation problem because you get uh, both uh, the 3-phosphoglyceraldehyde and the dihydroxyacetone phosphate, or you could use the triose, uh, dihydroxyacetone phosphate with a triose phosphate isomerase, uh, but that's uh, an equilibrium reaction. And uh, another thing would be erythrose uh, for phosphate, but there's another, another difficult metabolite uh, uh, to get in high purity. Uh, that's also an option. So the uh, most obvious choice is glyceraldehyde. By, uh, and then, of course, you need to do a phosphorylation. And last example, uh, this also shows that Let's say th there is no, no computer program to uh, uh, d do this yet, uh, but uh, it's a combination of the chemical and biochemical knowledge that you can uh, apply. So here, this, is, uh, this was the challenge of making uh, the D and L lactaldehyde uh, 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 first uh, available. So there were even old papers describing this molecule doesn't exist, this is not stable. Uh, so uh, when you make it available, uh, that's of course then uh, a contradiction. So be careful when you publish anything uh, that something doesn't exist, it might be changed uh, by uh, the, having the product. So here, having uh, the uh, metabolic uh, pathways uh, uh, to D or L lactaldehyde, you could actually derive it from methyl glyoxal or from the uh, lactic acid, D or L lactic acid, which is uh, very cheap. But uh, the uh, problem there is that all these aldehydes, of course, have reacting groups and uh, can react with amino groups of uh, proteins, uh, thereby uh, having uh, unwanted effects like inhibition or uh, uh, deterioration of the enzyme. So uh, that's, of course, the chemical knowledge that's available. So the uh, best option uh, is uh, to protect these uh, aldehyde uh, groups and uh, start from there. So in the uh, planning, of course, it's also important to uh, be realistic what type of biocatalytic reaction platforms are available, because if you have to develop this first, this will delay the time until you have your product uh, in the bottle. And of course, here I have selected for today just a few classes. Uh, oxidations are, of course, uh, uh, one platform where uh, biocatalytic uh, reactions are superior to uh, uh, chemical reactions. This is known already for 100 years by this shown by these historical examples of uh, selective uh, oxidation of certain hydroxy uh, uh, functions. Uh, this led, uh, of course, uh, in the past to these uh, uh, rules, uh, uh, which are still very useful uh, today. And, of course, uh, the famous example also by uh, famous Polish uh, 
uh, scientist, Thaddeus uh, Reichstein, who moved to Switzerland. Uh, in fact, I met him uh, as when I was a student. I met him sometimes in the cafeteria uh, where he was still working at the University of Basel. And he uh, already in 1932, uh, he was not afraid as a, an organic chemist to use uh, uh, this uh, bacterium xylinum, how he called it. He described it in German at that time, and I translated just it into English. He, he called it a strain wildly caught. And uh, this was the uh, important step in the uh, desorbital to l uh, uh, selective C5 oxidation, which uh, was then later industrialized at Hoffmann Laroche in the vitamin C uh, synthesis. So, it shows uh, uh, the importance of biocatalysis already uh, many decades ago. On the reverse uh, side, the reductions uh, in chemistry often take uh, many steps to get from the starting uh, compound to the product by reducing the oxidation state. And uh, there, uh, the uh, desire is to get uh, in a one step to the uh, product. This is now just illustrated with the D and L lactaldehyde, which I showed before in the retrosynthetic analysis. This is the realization uh, now applying the uh, different uh, uh, keto reductases or uh, as Prelog called it when he worked on this aldehyde dehydrogenases. And uh, so this is the uh, substrate, the methyl glyoxal, just in its protected form. And by screening uh, uh, something like uh, two dozen uh, keto reductases or aldehyde dehydrogenases, one can select for the uh, S-selective enzyme to get to this protected form, which can be easily deprotected to get to the uh, S2 hydroxypropionaldehyde in greater 99% E and greater 99% uh, yield. So that's uh, uh, an ideal case, and the same can be done for the, the opposite uh, correlity. And uh, this uh, uh, we have uh, made then uh, globally available. What was important also was to develop uh, the analytical technologies to prove the enantiopurity purity of the D and L lactaldehyde. First take the racemic compound, show that you have 50-50% uh, area under the peaks and you can separate it and then analyze the pure D and L form and show the uh, purity. So one uh, other important biocatalytic uh, uh, reaction platform, which uh, actually uh, uh, we utilize now routinely is uh, uh, biocatalytic uh, phosphorylation. So if you think how uh, phosphate groups have been introduced over the last 100 years in chemistry, there are basically two routes. One is over uh, the oxidation state 5, phosphorus 5, but what you have to do there is you have to, uh, uh, me, me with catalytic uh, uh, phosphorylation, of course you can do it also non-catalytically, but if you do it non-catalytically it means if you scale up the reaction you accumulate on the same order of uh, magnitude waste as you make a product. So catalytic uh, reactions are desirable. And uh, for the catalytic uh, reactions, you need uh, also catalysts, which are uh, protected uh, uh, phosphorus 5 donors, but you need, in addition, uh, also to protect uh, then other uh, hydroxy groups or other reactive groups on the starting material. And at the end, you need to deprotect to de get to this compound. If you go through phosphorus 3 oxidation state, you have uh, peptide, peptide based catalysts. Uh, and uh, you also need to protect the starting material. And you have two 
uh, deep protect, you also need to selectively oxidize phosphorus 3 to phosphorus 5 and then deep protect. So, there's a number of different steps and of course, the uh, key advantage that nature, life on our planet has chosen is to use enzymes which transfer phosphorus containing groups. Uh, this is just a, a new uh, review uh, which has been published this month in uh, which we were invited to write for trends in biotechnology this month. So, the uh, different classes of biocatalytic phosphorylations that can be done are uh, phosphorylation at the oxygen atom, phosphorylation at the nitrogen atom and phosphorylation at the carbon atom and at the sulfur. I will ch just show you some examples for oxygen and uh, phosphorus uh, phosphorylation. So, where can we select these enzymes from in nature? This is uh, a graph uh, showing the uh, number of uh, organisms on the y-axis as a function of the corresponding enzyme sub-subclasses EC27, which uh, uh, describe different uh, uh, phosphorus transferring enzymes and the size of these uh, circles is the number of uh, sequences uh, known. So, uh, you s see that we have a large collection and we just need to choose from nature what is uh, uh, already available, or what's already known also from the structural point of view, while on the other hand if you look at, uh, at the development of chemical catalysts. Um, there, are, there are some groups like uh, Miller's group in the United States uh, have developed uh, uh, chemical catalysts, but it needs, it requires many years to develop uh, a proper catalyst just for one reaction and that's of course uh, from the times, development time scale, not something practical for uh, industrial applications. So, having a a whole bunch uh, and of course nowadays uh, uh, many of uh, the uh, uh, reaction platforms are already developed but there is an even larger range of reactions where nobody can, can do the reaction so there's a great future for all of you to discover uh, novel reactions and, uh, and I think at the moment this is a very exciting area but I will show you just how uh, uh, the developed uh, biocatalytic reactions uh, are applied towards the synthesis of uh, metabolites. And I showed you before the retrosynthetic analysis of the pyridoxamine 5 prime phosphate. So, the uh, solution we decided to uh, then take uh, was uh, to try uh, uh, whether we could find uh, a transaminase that would uh, transaminate this aldehyde function in, uh, into this uh, mean function and this is just the, uh, so that was the realization of the idea uh, but sometimes you, you are not sure that the reality and the experiment really fit your idea but uh, uh, when we try, when we saw this uh, little, sorry, <coughs> this, this peak, uh, this was uh, another peak uh, when we saw this little peak of the pyridoxamine 5 prime phosphate appearing with the uh, omega transaminase uh, from uh, uh, this uh, microorganism, uh, we were very excited and uh, this actually then uh, helped us to, uh, uh, this was just a characterization of the pH and temperature of the enzyme and this uh, uh, helped us to uh, then make this compound here. You just see if you increase the, of course that's obvious, if you increase the amount of enzyme you can shorten the reaction time and what was really interesting is that the reaction, this was the first transaminase reaction that went to completion uh, that you can really convert it 100% uh, and uh, it only works with the omega transaminase if you use the alpha uh, transaminase, you have hardly uh, any uh, reaction. 
for uh, the synthesis of the whole range of uh, metabolites from the mevalonate and the non-mevalonate pathway. And with the mevalonate, there are also now there is a, a lot of diversification. Uh, uh, you need both to have the phosphates and the pyrophosphates. And for that, uh, I think uh, we had to develop the quantitative uh, phosphorus uh, NMR. Uh, kinetics, this uh, works uh, very nicely and what you do there is you calibrate with 85% uh, phosphoric acid in D2O in a stem uh, coaxial insert so you can directly uh, quantify what's uh, occurring in your NMR uh, vessel. Yeah, I will speed up. Uh, uh, this is just a result of an application in the mevalonal lactone uh, phosphorylation. Here you see the red curve is the phosphorylation of the R form. The blue curve shows that the S form is not phosphorylated at all and if you take the racemic mixture it's 50 percent. So this is the corresponding successful enzyme and the SDS page of the mevalonate kinase. This shows uh, the advantage of the one step uh, uh, enzymatic phosphorylation over the many-step, multi-step uh, chemical uh, reaction. Another application is the uh, glycerate kinase uh, from Thermotoga, which we have uh, applied for the phosphorylation of the uh, D form. Here you see that in the NMR trace you only see the peak appearing here, but not with the L form. I, th I think, uh, yeah, I, uh, I will skip over these uh, stability studies uh, here and uh, uh, just show uh, also the uh, uh, successful phosphorylation of the uh, glyceraldehyde to the D-glyceraldehyde uh, three phosphate. This is the uh, kinetics. And this is the uh, proof of the, uh, that the phosphorus group really sits at uh, this position and not at a different uh, position because only here you get uh, in the non-decoupled NMR spectrum the three peaks which shows that the phosphorus couples to the two protons at this position. If you have, would have the phos this position phosphorylated, you would see here only to a doublet. So uh, this is also uh, of interest to be careful about the composition of the uh, system. It, uh, in, if you take the racemic glyceraldehyde, uh, you see that significant amounts of inorganic phosphates are formed and this is due to the small molecule D-glyceraldehyde which acts as an organocatalyst in the enzyme system. It catalyzes the dephosphorylation of the ATP in the presence of the enzyme. So I won't go through these uh, details. So this is the uh, L uh, form and, and the kinetics. This is just a summary slide. Uh, by this, all these detailed investigations also of the stability, we have been able for the first time to make the pure D and L form. So the D glyceride 3-phosphate occurs in more metabolic pathways than streets going to the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. And we had to develop new methods to prove that we really have the D and the L. The L form is toxic and uh, needs to be uh, uh, detoxified in the cell. Uh, be also always careful when you develop a novel reaction to check the pH uh, stabilities. So from uh, all these uh, pH stability studies, uh, our uh, finding was that the glycerol D3-phosphate is not stable at pH 7, which you would normally think of from uh, standard biochemistry textbook knowledge, but it's uh, stable at pH 4 and below. And uh, one uh, example of the nitrogen phosphorylation we have just uh, published uh, this year is, is uh, uh, the uh, uh, energy-rich uh, phosphoarginine 
and uh, we achieved this by the phosphorylation of this uh, omega uh, nitrogen by uh, uh, a recombinant arginine uh, kinase and of course here this is the standard recycling system which you need to introduce in order to use only a small amount of ATP and this uh, allowed uh, uh, to make uh, this phosphorarginine. So I just conclude uh, uh, my talk with uh, some uh, opportunities and outlook uh, for the future. So I think uh, this uh, is an important global exercise to create synergies between metabolite synthesis and enzyme functions. So to discover uh, novel enzyme functions, one uh, needs uh, these metabolites. To discover islands of stability for natural un naturally unstable molecules. So the, the D-glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is vital for all of us. But uh, as we know since the 1930s uh, from Otto Warburg's famous experiment with cancer cells, one of the uh, uh, key features also between healthy and cancer cells is the change in glycolysis and if we want to dissect that for each type of cancer, one needs to find out what's occurring on the, on the molecular level. That is, will be a very exciting area for future also of cancer cell uh, metabolism. Uh, building new pathways uh, to metabolize with a high step uh, economy will uh, be another uh, interesting direction. Uh, debottlenecking hurdles to complete uh, conversions uh, because of course naturally uh, in biochemistry we have high regulation and of course in uh, let's say from an industrial point of view want to remove that re regulation because you want, don't want to have a mixture but to convert it uh, uh, fully to the mixture and there are now very exciting new concepts uh, uh, how to uh, achieve that and last but not least uh, in order uh, to, of, of course, improve, uh, uh, let's say, healthcare uh, and diagnosis, uh, we would not want, let's say, to undergo surgery to do a diagnosis, but rather to have a non invasive uh, uh, diagnosis. And uh, uh, stable isotopes are, uh, of course, now uh, very much of interest in magnetic resonance in imaging of whole human bodies. And you can transfer. Uh, there it's even more important to convert uh, all of the stable isotope labeled starting material completely into the product and one can trans uh, transfer directly the developed biocatalytic methods to, to these uh, stable isotope labeled methods. And with this I would like to end uh, my presentation. I would like to Thank you very much for your attention. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Well, great, Mark information. Thank you a lot for this, uh, I would like to say, the inspiring uh, lecture, giving us a lot of uh, new information, new ways, and uh, how to use, for what to use, uh, the uh, So, do you have any questions? Yep. I can. You can. Yeah, I can speak with the microphone. Uh, in the first part of your presentation, you mentioned about uh, uh, synthesis of some metabolites. And what is your opinion, what is the tendency to use the engineered uh, living cells to perform such bioconversions or to synthesize separate enzymes and apply cascade reaction in, uh, in, in this process? Well, I think it's a very good question and I think uh, uh, I can't Give, I, I would not dare to give you a general answer to that, uh, but I would say uh, that uh, one needs to uh, uh, put the different options uh, for each uh, 
particular uh, sequence side by side and compare the advantages and uh, disadvantages. Just to give you uh, an example, uh, in a specific case uh, of the uh, phosphorylated uh, uh, glycerols and uh, uh, these compounds from uh, glycolysis, I think there has been very interesting uh, work uh, by several groups uh, to uh, do it in, in whole cells and fantastic publications uh, uh, on that. But it's, uh, it, uh, it's coming there to the point which I mentioned before. If you can show you can achieve it, fantastic, you can publish it. But if you can't get uh, the product out of the uh, whole cell in a reasonable amount of time and it's decaying inside the cell. That's not what I would like to have. And that was indeed the case with, uh, with those groups who, who made that in the whole cell. So that's why uh, I decided for these cases to go to the isolated system. But we have other cases where we went the opposite way because uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, whole uh, the whole cell offered the opportunity to have the, uh, uh, the enzyme complex uh, available, which was not yet uh, uh, available in a, in a pure form. So I think we have, we have both sides. And, uh, 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 but I think, uh, I think uh, one needs to... Uh, really deal with this question in, in the very different uh, routes. If you have uh, biocatalytic reaction plat a whole series modules of biocatalytic reaction platforms available in a, like a Lego fashion, you have uh, all these way, then of course it will be much simpler to study the effects, how to combine all these steps in a cell-free system, because then you don't have to deal with uh, questions of the, of the transporters over the, over the cell membrane, whether, whether the compound is similar to some of the natural metabolites which get transported into the cell and, and also the product out of the cell. And there's indeed uh, 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 a European uh, 25 countries are uh, working together in a cost action called systems biocatalysis, and that's the aim of there are 300 scientists uh, working on in that uh, area uh, uh, to uh, look for uh, uh, ways in cell-free systems combining different step up. But it's of course a huge task and I think there is no final answer to your question. I think w w this will go on for years and one has to study it case by case to answer your question. Very good question. I think uh, that's, uh, I think, uh, one of the toughest uh, uh, things. That's the key question. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, whether uh, there is a likely, whether uh, the function is already known in nature or not at all uh, known in nature. And uh, uh, for the, of course, for the functions already known, and that's actually, of course, uh, what uh, uh, we focus on because uh, this is the easier way than uh, to discover a, a completely novel uh, function. Uh, for those, uh, I think uh, it's. Uh, uh, mainly uh, screening, uh, screening a series of uh, 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 organisms and uh, uh, then select that. Or if we have uh, now with the uh, increasing number of sequences, uh, uh, we uh, have uh, also uh, gone into uh, then uh, expressing a lot of uh, sequences uh, 
and testing which, uh, which ones are uh, successful. But, uh, and I think this is really, there is a, is a large uh, range of information which just can be harvested in, in the short term, and there the development time is, uh, is uh, rather short. But of course, for certain uh, reactions which uh, are difficult to do, it would be nice to look for uh, uh, completely uh, novel functions, but that's the hard discovery path. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. Uh, I think uh, uh, we uh, uh, have not applied uh, uh, this uh, methodology because uh, we were not uh, interested in the interaction, but we were interested uh, uh, how, uh, how much uh, uh, space-time yield of the of the product. So we were only let's say we have the on the slide uh, I showed with some of the phosphorylations we have the starting material yeah, which I noticed that, that you have the some kind of kinetics if you have the proper amount of the phosphor in the in this reference, exactly yeah then you have the amount of, of, of product uh, appearing in the reaction. This way you can also model the interaction between the protein and yeah. Yes, that would be indeed, indeed a very, very interesting uh, question. But uh, uh, since we were uh, short of time, because we needed to have the, the compound, normally uh, there's a lot of time pressure to have the compound, so we did not have time to study. Uh, the, although this would be very interesting to, to study that interaction, and especially this might be of much interest because there is uh, one last compound which uh, is not yet globally available and that's the 1,3-diphosphoglycerate and there uh, that type of interaction would be very uh, interesting because there it was shown that that the metabolite makes also a, a covalent bond with, with some uh, proteins which transfer uh, that. Uh, and uh, but this is a very nobody has up to now been able. There was a, a group, the group uh, from uh, Natalia Nagradova and Vladimir Muronets at uh, Lomonosov State University in Moscow, who have worked for years uh, on that. But uh, also uh, they have not never isolated uh, that uh, compound. It would be very interesting globally to have for the first time that high energy intermediate. Um, so we are working on that. Uh, stay uh, tuned uh, in the future. We will certainly get it. Okay. Oh, after, okay. after the lecture, it's a prize. Ah, okay, great. Uh, yeah, this will be delicious. Yeah. <laughs> you want it. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, thank yeah. you. Let's applaud. Thank you again. Mm -hmm. Thank you.